The tribes of the desert are here, and the first faction we're going to be taking a look at is Axum. I'm going to first do what I've did, done with all of the DLCs. I'm going to do a faction preview first after extensive testing and um, playing with the factions. I'm going to do a more comprehensive review. So this is mainly to show off the units, show off the stats, and uh, sort of make an educated guess about how well the faction is able to stack up against other po powerful factions, considering those aspects. So for Axum, the first general is a desert chieftain, high amount of health, good armor, good melee defense. He has a um, spear, which is very useful. He's, he's for being heavy melee cavalry, and with his stats, he looks to be a good choice. The brass guard, you won't see me bringing a foot general anytime soon in Attila. Expert charge defense, steady, shield screen. However, having a general on foot is just too risky in my opinion. Then we have the Desert Warlord. Uh, the Desert Warlord, once again, Spear Infantry, which is good. He's heavy, he has decent amount of armor, good health, overall a solid general's option. Now for Spear Infantry, we have Desert Levy, uh, standard spearman. Tor Warriors, your standard spearman, a bit low on the health and armor side. Desert Spears, now we get a unit with nice armor. Expert charge defense on all of these units. Uh, and here we have an interesting unit. Cavalry counter tactics, mutilation, plus 400% attack against cavalry, and plus 900% attack against elephants. That's a significant bonus. If that applies to damage as well as to melee attack, it's quite, quite good. They could potentially, if they survive the charge, they could destroy some cavalry. And it seems like the encyclopedia is updated, because these guys have a 30 attack against cavalry. So, we're going to test how well they stack up. Sons of the Invincible Maram, they have a shit ton of abilities, scare, low armor. They are very fast for being an infantry unit, uh, but very low on the armor side and only 85 health. Seems to be a bit of a um, glass cannon unit against cavalry. Then we have the Muscal Spearman. Very high melee attack. They are reported as having excellent armor piercing. So armor piercing of 14 for spear infantry. Uh, let's have a look at their attack against cavalry now. Their uh, attack against cavalry 27, bonus against cavalry, quite nice. Good health, decent armor. When we get to melee infantry we have the desert tribes. Cheap, decent melee infantry. We have the afar swords. Low armor. Uh, a very, very, very high charge bonus of 71. This is an interesting unit that could cause devastation if it manages to rear charge. Also with Scare being immune to fear, it could do a lot of damage and also a very quick infantry unit with a speed of 40. The Afar Raidmasters, another light infantry with high speed, high charge, very high attacking stats. The Spice Warriors, once again, very high very high offensive stats and these units have 44 melee damage but only two of that is armor piercing so very low armor piercing they don't have the standard sword that has 40 and 4 but very high base damage so they will be good against low armored troops the spice warriors looks like they are wielding a conda yep base damage 40 armor piercing 10 so they come with a bonus against infantry, I assume. Let's see if it's put in there. No, it's, it doesn't say, but maybe they do, maybe they don't. That's for the re review to decide. Then we have the Kushite, Kushite Shotelai. They have a decent amount of armor, decent health, decent charge, overall decent stats, also disciplined. Beharis Chosen. Um, once again, a decent unit with shield wall and unbreakable. Shield wall, this shield wall doesn't give a bonus against infantry anymore, and that's interesting. Uh, let's see on the other units if the in bonus versus infantry is removed. Well, yeah, it has, still has a 15 attack against infantry, I just missed it. Let's see, shield wall, yeah, 15 attack against infantry, so still having the bonus against infantry. Spice guard, double handed axe units with arrows. This is an insane unit. It has 49 missile damage, uh, 12 AP. It has all of the different shot types, standard, flaming, whistling, and heavy shot. Together with precision shot, scares everyone, 
they are immune to fear and they wield a double-handed axe. This could be an insane unit to face. Uh, usually shock infantry is very vulnerable to enemy missiles, but we haven't seen shock infantry with missiles. Now, of course, you don't want these guys in extended skirmish engagements, but let's say you have four, five, or six of these guys, and they pour the heavy shots, pour the flaming shots into cavalry. They could do a lot of damage. Desert bows, standard crappy bowmen, Morris archers, high amount of missile damage for the price, 53 with 16 AP. Then we have the elite Nubians, 42 missile damage, but a bit low on the ammunition with these guys, 15 and 17. They also have a slinger, a desert hurler, which is quite important. Uh, the standard shot does what standard slinger ammunition does, slows down enemy targets, 14 ammunition, looks to be a nice unit. Now with Axum, the camels are in force here. We have camel warriors, Arabic horsemen. The camel warriors use a spear, finally. They are very cheap, they are very light melee cavalry, but they are slow. They scare horses, so it might be nice to get these guys into a melee blob. We'll see, we'll see how they stack up. The Arab horsemen, cheap, uh, overall decent medium, uh, decent medium melee cavalry, but they do use swords, which could be a problem. The Afar Camel Raiders, they have the 44 melee damage to AP sword. Then we have Desert Raiders, excellent attack against cavalry, so wielding a spear, very useful. Low melee attack, very high melee defense, low armor, low health, but with two precursors. Then we have the Armored Camel Warriors, and for their price, the armor and health is insane. The charge bonus isn't that good. The speed, they're extremely, extremely slow, but they have a good missile block chance and are very affordable, so it will be interesting to see how this very heavy melee cavalry stacks up to similarly priced horse melee cavalry. Then we have a bonus guard, another heavy melee cavalry unit, but this is a, this is a horse unit, so 70 speed, overall decent stats. Bet George's cavalry, um, let's see, their speciality, they have very high melee attack, their melee damage is good, all of these, the melee cavalry selection for, for Axum is very nice, the Cushy uh, mounted Shotelai uh, also looks to be a decent melee cavalry unit, but a bit pricey in my opinion. Then we have the Camel Lancers, high charge, low speed, scare horses, no armor, no melee defense, but their price is um, quite affordable, so it will be interesting to see how they stack up against similarly priced shock cavalry. Mounted Mars archers, they do not have, they can fire while moving, but they do not have Parthian shot. Might be a problem for them. Then we have desert mounted skirmishers, they have Parthian shot, 450, very light skirmishers, speed of 100, 90 missile damage, 15 bonus, could be a nice unit to bring. Desert Mounted Javelin Men, they also have Parthian, they have a bit more ammunition. Um, and they wield a sword in combat, these guys also wield a sword in combat, so no spares for them. Then we have the Warhounds, and this is a combined Archer Warhound unit. Thir 23 ammunition here, and 17 ammunition here, but depending on the size Depending on the size of the unit, the archer or the skirmish capabilities might be a bit underwhelming. But it will be fun to try out these guys in... Try out these guys just to send them in and... Send them in and essentially... Try to skirmish while sending the dogs and try to make the enemy move away. So we'll have a look at the units now on the battlefield. I've talked enough about this faction. It looks, depending on how well the cavalry does, it might be a very, very powerful faction. It has double-handed axes with with um, range capabilities. It has camels that finally look to be good in melee. They've had the sense to bring with them some, some spears. They have decent cavalry overall. Uh, I can't find a single category where this faction lacks something. They have horse skirmishers, they have uh, slingers, just about everything you could want from a powerful army. Now let's see how they, the, the units of Axum look here in the desert.
All right. So quite a few of these quite a few of these uh, units have guerrilla deployment. Now the the Morris archers guerrilla deployment. The Adana trackers only thirty bowmen in this unit, but they look. I mean the the visuals are great for this unit. Uh, then we have the Desert Raiders, once again a cool looking unit. The Afar Camel Raiders, they look fierce as fuck. The Desert Bows. The Mounted, uh, Desert Mounted Javelins, Mounted Mars Archers. Arabic Horse. Desert Warlord. Abuna's Guard. Kushit Mounted Shutelai. The Desert Tribes, the Afar Swords, the Afar Raid Master. I, I love the look of these units. They've done something really nice here. The Spice Warriors. I think they are the ones. Yeah, they're wielding a Konda. Then you have the Kushite Shotelai, Behar's Chosen. Then we have the Axemen, and there's something about Axemen with bows on their backs. That is just awesome. I really want to use the Spice Guard in, in battle. Camel Warriors. Armored Camel Warriors. Finally a Camel unit with a spear. Looks absolutely stunning. Bet Georgius Cavalry. Camel Lancers. So cool to see camels with spears finally. I've missed that quite a lot. So this is Axum. Looks to be a faction that can be a lot of fun to play with. Uh, very interesting. Here we have the Tor Warriors with a completely new weapon type. Uh, sort of a light halberd spear hybrid there. So what's left for me to do now is to just um, test the shit out of this faction. Play some battles and I'll come back with a review of the faction after having poked around more in the database as well. Strength and honor.